Hello, my name is Cedric Arya and I am a paleontologist currently based at the Royal Ontario Museum in Canada and mostly working on the early evolution of arthropods. With my colleagues Jean Vanier from France, T. Yoon Park from the Republic of Korea and Robert Gaines from the United States of America, we have published an article in BioEssays about the interpretation of brains and other nervous tissues preserved in the earliest animals, including arthropods, more than 500 million years ago. Fossils from the Burgess Shale and similar deposits around the world are emblematic not only because they give us insight into the Cambrian explosion and the origin of biodiversity, but also because they were preserved with an exceptional level of detail. Preservation is so fine that internal organs are also preserved, such as the gut and other parts of the digestive system, and even eggs. But what has captured most of the attention in the last decade is the preservation of nervous systems, which can be particularly important to understand the affinity and evolution of these animals. The high quality of preservation of British shell type fossils can also lead to a paradox. As much as a high level of detail can be informative, it can also be very misleading if all shapes and patterns are interpreted without considering the morphological and geological complexity behind a fossil specimen. In our study, we temper down the excitement generated by putative nervous tissues in early arthropods by reviewing all available data with a more rigorous approach based on three fundamental criteria of paleontology. First, there is topological disambiguation. In order to be confident with an interpretation, a specific feature, in this case a nerve or a part of the brain, needs to be sufficiently distinguishable from surrounding parts of the animal known to preserve. In the case of the Burgess shell, a lot of internal tissues but also parts of the cuticle can overlap with what could be identifiable as a nervous system. In addition, there may be features that are not identifiable given our current knowledge, confounding or corresponding to what some may see as a nervous tissue. Second, there is the consistency of morphology and anatomy. A feature may be set apart and resemble nerves, but where it is in the fossil and what appendage it is proposed to connect to might not make sense with other parts of the specimen or what is generally known from this fossil. Generally speaking, the external anatomy is much better known than new features interpreted as part of the nervous system and is therefore more reliable. And third, what we call explicit taphonomic context. Everything that we see in a fossil has a long geological history. Even if the peculiarity of fossil from the Burgess shell and similar deposits is to be originally preserved as films of organic carbon as a result of the compression of the air. All these factors affecting the geological history of a fossil form the taphonomy. Even within the Burgess shell, preservation quality can vary greatly depending on the original state of the animal, decay and weathering. The orientation in which an animal is preserved whether we have all parts of it, and the different shapes that the same feature can take across specimens are also part of the teflon. And the long, tedious job of the paleontologist is to observe and understand all these variables, 
in order to make accurate interpretations. Being a lot more circumspect about what we actually see in these fossils certainly scales down the implications made for the early evolution of arthropods, based on what has been described often too hastily as nervous systems. But the perspective that even under such scrutiny we can use some of this evidence to understand the evolution of the brains and visual systems in this 500 million year old animals emphasizes how important this evidence remains. As we synthesize the significance of this data for the origin of the most diverse animal phylum on earth, we invite you to check our paper, now published in BioAssays.